you're here, uh, likely because you scratched one of the saddlebags on your Harley Davidson motorcycle or a cager opened a door into it or whatever the reason may be. Now, what we're specifically dealing with today is stock paint on a Harley Davidson motorcycle. If you have a custom paint job aftermarket and you have a scratch or a ding, you're gonna have to take that up with your custom painter or a new custom paint shop if that particular paint shop isn't in business or you can't find them, whatever. They're gonna have to try to match it up the best they can or if you have graphics that can get really involved. So what we're talking about today is a scratch on your stock paint on your Harley Davidson motorcycle. I got in today, this came in and so I wanted to do a video on it and a tutorial video because we're gonna show you uh, basically what you can do. Uh, and of course we're budget conscious so you don't wanna go out and spend a ton of money. You don't wanna spend more money than you have to to replace the component on your Hardy Davidson saddlebag. Yes, you can get the different components. You can get online. There's different microfish programs where they break down all the different parts uh, for all over your Hardy Davidson motorcycle. They're very valuable. It's what the dealerships use. Um, but just know that you don't have to buy the whole saddlebag. I have in the past run into a dealership and they didn't do it on purpose. I just don't think the guy had much training. Uh, he thought he had to sell me the whole saddlebag, which can, which can get very spendy. In my particular case, all I needed was the lower carcass um, of the saddlebag, all right? And I needed to paint match it to Amber Whiskey. It's a 2014 Street Glide Special sitting behind me, and it is Amber Whiskey. It does have some pinstriping, as you can see. Um, so it had to be very specific to my model, very easily done. You can either go to your dealership or, like I say, just get online and do it and get the exact, you know, bag and color of your stock motorcycle and uh, they can ship it to you. There's not much fix in these guys. Um, it would cost you more for the most part uh, unless you know how to do that yourself and you need some real specialty stuff. Um, these aren't made, you know, of metal or anything. So they crack and they get, you know, scraped up. Going to be pretty hard to uh, fix it without just buying the whole unit. I didn't need the lid. Um, in a minute, I'm going to show you the different components on these saddlebags. We're going to break it down. Um, we're going to take the lid off. Uh, if you had a latch break, you can just get the latch component. So just know that you don't have to go out and buy a brand new saddlebag. Get the pieces and parts that you need. And so I've got this new Amber Whiskey saddlebag. It's uh, looking really, really nice and it's going to change out nicely on my 2014 Street Glide Special here. We'll get to that in a minute. So you ask, well, I'm going to have an old one. What am I going to do with my old saddlebag? Well, there's a couple things you can do. A couple thoughts. You can save it for a backup. Uh, depending on how heavily damaged. If it's not cracked and it just scratched up, could get you by in the future. Uh, in my particular case, I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna make some of my money back because uh, I had to purchase this. This particular saddlebag, just the lower carcass that I got was $315. It was about $341 when it was all said and done. I had to pay tax in my particular state. Um, I did just call down to my dealership. I know the guys really well. They know me. I'm down there all the time. I just told them to order it up for me. It got shipped to the dealership. Uh, and I just went down and picked it up. Um, but what I'm gonna do to make some of my money back is I'm actually gonna take the saddlebag and it is damaged a little bit on the bottom. Um, but you know what, for a lot of people, that would be an useful saddlebag. Still, I'm gonna sell it on eBay and uh, somebody will make use of that. Some people might not mind or are in a pinch and just need a saddlebag back on their bike because they can't afford to replace everything right away, but they need a working saddlebag. Or you may sell it to somebody who can do some sort of body work on this plastic type material on these saddlebags. So I can uh, get some cash back and it makes the expense of having to replace it go right back in. Um, you know, you could think about going down to a local paint shop and seeing. I mean, they can get the paint right from uh, Harley Davidson. They can get the actual paint code. Maybe they can touch it up, maybe not. It might cost you more to get it in. Those are some things that you're gonna to have to look into, but for me personally, it's easiest and it was fairly affordable to just go ahead and get the carcass. It's matched perfect. I don't have to have any hassle. It was to me you know, within seven days. And uh, with that said, there are some thoughts, some things to think about, hopefully some useful information. Let's get in to replacing this saddlebag. So as you can see here, we've got my stock saddlebag. This is the one I wanna replace. Of course, we're just replacing the lower carcass. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up here and take a look. The first thing I wanna do is get rid of the lid. I need to get this lid off of the saddlebag. And the first way we do that, and I don't know how well you can see up in here, but this little piece of fabric needs to come off. We've got one, two, and three, four. So we're gonna go ahead and take those off. And they look like Phillips, or no, actually they're Torx. 
So as you can see, we've just got a, looks like a Torx 15 right there. I've got my T handle. I'm gonna go ahead and back both these out. All right. I'll get those the rest of the way out with my fingers and then I, to get in here, because the T handle was too long, I'm actually gonna have to get up in here with the ratchet T15 and get this one out that way. All right, next we've got the hinges here, you know, where the latch actually latches to. All right, we've got to get these off. These are just little aftermarket stuff I have. These are the two quarter turn pins that actually mount it to your motorcycle. I found these little handy little things, cables. You can make them, of course, but they just keep your pins from falling in all your junk. But that's the only thing that might be different than what you see. But anyways, we've got to get these hinges off. There's four bolts, and of course, on each of them. And if I turn this around for you, you'll see on the back side there's four, and they're Torx, and they're Torx 20 and I'm just gonna go to town taking all these off. So we've got all those backed out. Of course, the hinges, they only go one bay back in on the inside, so don't worry about that. I'd keep a little parts to keep all your parts separate so you know how they go back, just easier, little uh, deal I do. Of course, these uh, little rubber grommets are gonna have to come off, and it looks like they're just on the inside and the outside, and so I'm just peeling and pushing with my other finger, and you'll just wanna remember the smaller portion of the grommet goes on the inside, and the larger portion on the outside, those pop out fairly easy. There we go. All right, we can spin this around and we've got to get this lid off. And we're looking at, looks like right here, it's got a hinge of course, and we've got a couple bolts. Again, Torx drive. And it looks like they're probably gonna be the T15 size is what they're gonna be. Let me see if this T handle fits. Yep. And so these just come out right on the inside and I'm gonna work on taking those out. And I'll just give you a quick shot of that so you know what I'm working on. If I prop this up, I'm just taking these two out right here. And as you can see, I'm just removing this last one. There's just two of them right there and it is those two. And then that's all. And then this lid actually separates I'll move this over there. This lid actually separates. So now we've got the lid. And I'm actually gonna turn that up because the lid's good. I don't wanna scratch it on the lift there. Now we're looking at the carcass. And this is everything that we needed to take off this particular carcass. This is my one that I don't want. It's kind of bunged up underneath on this side here and I can just get that out of our way. I can reach over, grab our lid here. Now, let's go ahead, you know, basically I would just have to put this lid back on my new carcass that I already showed you, um, the same way it came off there. But you may be in a situation where you actually just need to replace your lid. So let's go ahead and dive into this lid and uh, we'll show you how the components and how this comes apart. So with this lid, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Torx 15, I'm just gonna use my T-handle. I'm gonna go around and uh, set this flat and start taking all these off. And actually that one's a little, the little bit bigger. It's gonna be T20, I believe. Yes, it is, it's gonna be a Torx 20. And I will tell you that uh, these were T, they got all different size on here, Torx 20 in here. And then looks like they're bumping down to a smaller size here. And that's a little, maybe a T15. And it is, so these ones along here are T15. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these four now. All right, and just make sure you have a method of, you know, I took bolts out up here. I've got those laid up here. Um, and I've got their longer ones here. I know that they went in right here. I've got those. So come up with your own system because they are different lengths and a little bit different sizes. So next I'm gonna go ahead and dig into these. And it's going to be a Torx 20, it looks like, right along here. All right, and so I've just finished backing this last one out and get that out with my fingers. Again, I got a parts pile over here for this. And this is your, this piece comes off and this is where your locking mechanism goes in, if you can see that there. So that went over there just like so, and that fits in your locking mechanism. That goes in there. So now we can set this piece out of the way. And it looks like here is your whole hinge system. It goes underneath this stripping. You've got glued down stripping, it looks like, weather stripping. But it looks like this part's left unglued and this is actually a little bit glued to this hinge right here, um, right now. But that's how this particular 
uh, system works. Let's dig into it a little bit more. All right, so as we start manipulating stuff, the, like I say, these are glued down. Uh, here's your cable, and uh, this is for your you know lock system here. You've got in here, you've got a pin and a cable. Um, looks like that could come off with a nut, but I think I can lift this a little bit right here, and you kind of see this whole, there's a whole inner plastic piece that we're, we're gonna, uh, aside from the lid that's actually in here that we're gonna break free. All right, and so to keep things in reference for you, um, just so you can kind of see, like I say, this whole part moves, this plastic piece within. Um, I'm going to spin it around. This is your lock over here, your locking mechanism. But if you look to the inside right here, uh, there's another bolt right here. And this has to do with your actual latching system. You can see I'm working the latch on the outside. And this is right in here. So we're going to go ahead and remove this bolt right inside. And it's going to be a T20. I'm going to use my ratchet handle for this one because my T handle is too long to get rid of it. And I'm going to back that out. All right, now that I've got that out right there, I'm going to go ahead and spin this whole thing around. And we've got a couple little torques right here on this hinge yet. I'm going to go ahead and back those out. And it looks like it's going to be a T10. And actually, it's going to be a little bit bigger, T15. There we go. That's the money right there. All right, so got that one out. Set those aside. All right, so that's pretty much all the bolts. The lock system's free. Now it's just a matter of this kind of cavity in here. There's this plastic latching system, and it runs through here a channel to the locking system. There's a cable that runs through here. We pretty much got everything free. I'm going to lift up on this a little bit, get this out of my way. I'm just going to manipulate this particular plastic piece up and take a couple hands for this. Once you do that, you can kind of, you see my latch fell out there. It freed that, so my latch is out, or latch handle. And then I can just kind of lift this up, and that whole system, so now I can set my saddlebag aside, there the lid. And now, this is your entire latching system um, within. Let me actually set that aside, and let's look at this. So that's all, if all you needed was a top lid, um, you would have to take, this hinge off and you would have to peel this uh, you know molding back or you may buy uh, with a new lid I'm not sure it may come with this molding I have never ordered just the lid um, but that's something you'd have to check into and you might have to glue it back down just depends um, of course if you're out there watching and you've done it go ahead and leave a comment under the video here so you can help people but we would just peel this off the hinge and we'd move those parts and we would do everything we just did and put it back in the new lid and of course, we'd be good to go. All right, let's uh, look a little closer at the latching and lock system. Hopefully you're enjoying the video. If you wanna make sure that content and these free videos keep coming your way, there is a way you can support us. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. The community is growing over there. We'd like to have you involved too. Um, there's no risk over there. You can sign up for a certain level um, and pay a certain amount per piece of content with a cap, absolutely no risk. There are some benefits over there, um, t-shirts and a private Facebook group and some premium content. All depends on what level you sign up as, but that is a way that you can assure the content keeps coming your way. Lawabidingbiker.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Of course, if you ever want to just leave a flat donation, we do accept that too and appreciate it. Lawabidingbiker.com slash donate. Don't forget to check out that weekly podcast, guys. It's on fire ton of content we're putting out and get involved over there. It's a Law Abiding Biker podcast. All right, let's get back into your video. All right, so, you know, like I say, you could get in microfish, you can get just a new lock, and to take that off, we would just take this little nut off, and you could get a new lock. Um, if you had to replace your lock, that's not too tough. Even before you took all this out, um, you could order this whole piece with the cable and the latch that runs in it. We could strip this down further and, and actually, you know, get your... There's a plastic latch in here, you can see. This is the, the mechanism. You can see it work back and forth. Your two latches there and there for the hooks on, on your saddlebag uh, that we already took off the carcass, the main carcass. But like I say, there's only a couple more bolts, and uh, we could strip this whole thing down 
And so, you know, get on microfish, maybe one of your latches breaks, I don't know, but I just want you to know it can be done. That's the basics. And now we can get it back together and get our new carcass with our original lid. We can put the new lid or the original lid on our brand new carcass. All right, and just for the purposes of this tutorial video, a lot of people like to see it go back together. So we're gonna quickly put this thing back together in the order that we took it out. And I will show you uh, this as we do it. It'll be real quick. So I'm just working the plastic, the whole piece back in there. And of course, line these up in these tabs because that's where our bolts and I've been diligent about placing all my parts. And I can pop this back up over and all my molding is still down. I've got a couple bolts that go in here. I'm gonna slide my lock back in the little cut out there. So that's basically secured back in there. So now what I can do is start putting my four bolts up here. All right, I will tell you the first thing I'm gonna do now that it's all in here, I do wanna get these bolts in. I wanna focus on my latch a little bit. Best thing to do is just make sure you put your fingers in both these, open your latch all the way up because it can be closed and make sure it's open. And then I'm gonna take my latch and you can see it's kinda geared, so to speak, uh, right here and it goes in a certain way and you can actually look down in there and you can see there's a half cutout on it and there's gears, it only goes in one way. And so you can go ahead and in the fully open position, I guess it wouldn't matter if it was closed or open, but just make sure you get it in the right way and that the gears are actually, make sure it's functioning. There we go. Now I can turn it over and I can actually manipulate it and see that it's opening and closing. With that, I wanna secure that. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back on the inside here and I'm gonna grab my bolt and secure that. All right, and so I put my bolt, you know, I've been diligent about my piles and where my parts are and I know what bolt, it's a real long one. I will caution you guys, I'm getting this stuff a little snug. You just snap this plastic, you're gonna over tighten. It's plastic, you're gonna strip stuff. It doesn't have to hold that much. So just get it snug, be careful about over tightening. With that said, I'm gonna get these four bolts. I'll spin it around. I'm gonna get this hinge in with these two and then I'm gonna do my bolts along the top here. All right, and I'm just finishing tightening this last one, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna dive right in and get this hinge secured. All right, so finishing tightening that up. Now, don't forget we've got our lock mechanism and I'm just gonna get that back in. It's got the hole, the cut out there and all that. So we'll go ahead and secure that up. There we go. And then on the back side, we'll turn it because we've got and actually, make sure you have it right, it should fit there. Um, there, now it fits real nice. Get in a hurry there. All right, and then there's two bolts that go right through the back here. We'll get those secured. All right, so now we've got everything back on the lock. It's looking real solid. Latch is working good. All right, now we've got to get this little piece on. This is where your lock pops through, of course. And the way you do that is there's three tabs that go right in three holes and the lock goes through there. And you can see up on here, there's the three holes where those three tabs go. Pretty easy. And you line that all up and it gets real secure like that. Oop, slipped off a little bit there. And then if you'll remember inside here, we'll flip that out of our way. Inside here, there's three bolts that we need to put in. So I'm gonna get started on that. All right, so there our lid is back together. And that's how you would replace the lid components or get your good components out of the lid and just use the shell. You can slide this aside and for a moment and we'll bring in our new, brand new saddle bag, the carcass anyways, the lower portion. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take my rubber grommets. Remember the small part went on the inside and we're gonna have to work these in. The easiest way is just to, you know, grab them. If you wanna spit on them a little bit, put a little lubrication, whatever, but we gotta get these grommets in these holes all right, and I'm just gonna use, I don't wanna use too sharp a screwdriver. You know, you don't wanna stab your bag. This is just a, actually an auto tool for trim, removing trim. And you know, there's no real uh, major technique to this. You just kinda gotta work them and get them to go in. Kinda push on them at the same time. All right, and then we got the last of it there and we're just, I'm gonna spin it a little bit and I'm grabbing on the inside, there we go. Now we'll go ahead and get the other grommet going. All right, and I got my two hinges. I'm gonna take advantage of this bag, this lower part, not having the lid on it. It's easier to work on. I'll do put, attach the lid again at the very end, but you got these two, of course, doesn't matter. They both go in the same. 
and I'm going to start putting that in. One thing you'll note is I'm going from the inside. These are threaded. All right, so uh, I don't want that obtrusive bolt, you know, sticking out this way. So I'm actually going to put the head side right there and start securing these down. And I'm just finishing up putting these internal latches. And again, you don't need to over tighten this stuff, guys. You're gonna break it or strip it. It's not gonna fall off. I see people worry about that so much little things fall. It's not going to. This is gonna get loose when I'm unlatching my motorcycle long before it falls off, indicating that I simply need to get a wrench and tighten that. So just get them snug and you should be good to go. So that's everything back on uh, the actual saddlebag carcass itself. We've got the components. Now we can put the lid back on. So now we're ready to actually attach the lid back to the new lower saddlebag here. Um, there's an elastic strap that holds the lid and uh, we've kind of got to do that in tandem with this step, but I've got my bolts here and this just goes right up and you've got your latch with your four holes. We're just going to do the two center bolts right now and uh, then we'll do the two out one, uh, two outside ones, all right? And uh, this simply goes on here and I'm going to reach in. And if you had a, another pair of hands, well, that would be wonderful, but I don't today. So I'm going to go ahead and do the two inside here. All right. And this may be useful to you. I'm just kind of to help me. I've laid the saddlebag, you know, down on the hinge here. It gives me a working platform because I don't have a lot of hands to work with. And then just don't cross thread these guys, you know, make sure you, I've left this one a little bit loose. I've got it started, but I've got enough wiggle room to wiggle this hinge back and forth to make sure I get this lined up appropriately. So I wouldn't tighten anything down yet, but I would at least get some stuff started. And then once you do that, then we can take um, our actual strap, uh, elastic, I should say, it, it holds the lid from falling and you know tearing the hinges off. Two bolts going on up here, we'll do that in a second, but right now these other two go right on the outside and there's actually, you know, a metal piece in here and it's got a hole in the metal piece within the fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get through that. And then it's going to go through that and it's going to go through um, the outside of this hinge, if you can see right there, down there. So I'm just going to work again. I'm going to lay it on its side. That's why I left everything a little bit loose right now um, so that I can get everything started and have some wiggle room. So that's what I'm going to work on, these two. And that goes like so, and then I'll get this side in. All right, and so I'm just finishing. And again, you could just strip this. It's going into metal through the plastic, but again, it doesn't need a ton of force. That's why they put this, so it doesn't have to hold the whole weight of that lid, because it probably would, in time, you know, uh, cause some problems. But I'm just going to get those nice and snug. I'm going to flip this back, because I got my two inside ones here that I left loose, so I'd have some wiggle room, and I'm just going to finish cranking these down. All right, now that I've got all that tightened down, the last thing is to get this little fabric. I'm going to have to lift it up a little bit so it can have some stretch. And I've got my last two bolts here, and they just go right into some plastic here. And a lot of guys, you know, on some of this metal stuff, you got some real Loctite guys out there that thread lock, that just die if you don't use blue or red on a certain project. You know what? Go ahead. And uh, if you want to use Loctite, use Loctite. I don't care. There are some projects I'll use thread lock on. Um, this isn't one of them. You know, what I'm talking about is where we went into the metal plate over here and stuff. Okay, I watch my stuff. If it gets a little loose, I'll tighten it. Um, but if you want to do that, you go for it. And I'm just finishing these last two here. And I'm just finishing off, tighten these right here, these last two. All right, guys, there you go. That is everything you need to know on uh, you know how to replace the lower carcass, how to get the components off, what this lid is all about, you know, and all these latch components up there, everything's working back. Um, you could literally change out every single piece of your saddlebag depending on what part. Maybe you damage one of these, maybe you damage something in here, maybe a lot goes bad. That should cover everything. Uh, and again, just look at the, the microfish and all that online or go to your dealership get the parts you need. You don't need to buy the whole saddlebag because these can commonly get damaged. If a bite gets dropped and you don't have the, you know, saddlebag protectors, you can end up, you know, scratching up 
this piece down here, that's typical. You know, a lot of times you can get the bars that go out here. I am gonna do a video on that soon for you guys on an install on that, because they are pretty handy, especially if you ride aggressively at low speed. You know, you're gonna end up dropping your bike if you're training and pushing yourself. Um, you know, or the top of these lids, you know, get damaged. A lot of guys need to replace the top portion. Um, pretty common things and just don't want you to feel lost or like you can't do it. You can do it, save your money. Don't pay a mechanic, you know, whatever, however many, you know, dollars an hour to do that, guys. You can do it right in your shop. Hopefully, and we made it easy for you. All right, guys, I almost forgot. Got in such a hurry to get my new saddlebag on. Don't forget on the bottom of these, you've actually got two of these uh, rubber, you know, protectors that go over the bar, the support bar. Uh, easiest way to get these off, guys, is just get a pair of pliers and pull this. You can see on the inside, uh, I don't know how well you can see, but there's little nipples and they pop up through and they're, don't try to get a screwdriver and push these through. You'll be there all day. Uh, a little force is what these take. And so, again, there was already one there. I took it off, but really you just got to get in there and crank them. You can get really frustrated if you try to do it another way. And then of course, there's your rubber piece. It's got the little nipples. Those will pop back to the bottom of the new bag. All right, and so I've got one of those on guys. Um, easiest way to do this is I'm just gonna reach underneath and I've got the nipples. Of course, I'm gonna pop that up through. You can get really frustrated with these, but there is an easy way to do it. And once I get that started under the bottom, I'm just simply going to put pressure with my leg and those nipples are up through there now. So now I can just grab pliers and simply pull those through. And now both of those are installed. Makes easy work of that little situation. All right, best part is taking my brand new saddlebag and getting it back on my bike because I am headed out on a ride and uh, club meeting we have tonight. And sounds like they're grilling some ribs. So I'm out of here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.